bullseye every week with her hard riding. Street shooting. And suspense. I was afraid you weren't going to make it. Well, you didn't think we'd miss your wedding, did you? You stopped at your newspaper office. The fella said you were down here. Or just some last minute fixing before the ceremony tag. How do you feel about being best man, Dave? The truth, Lofty, it's worse than any gunfight I ever walked into. <laughs> you just hand the rings where you do the gun, and they'll come off without a hitch. <laughs> Say, where's the lucky girl, John? Go up in the room. Kathy? Yes, master? Come on down here. Let me present my fiance, Kathy Stokes, Annie Oakley. Hello, Kathy. Lofty Craig. How do you do? And Annie's brother, Tag. Hello. Uh, you don't suppose we could have sort of an outdoor wedding, do you? Well, we planned on the hotel, Tag. Why do you ask? Well, to tell you the truth, <laughs> Tag's just not used to being dressed up in his Sunday best. <laughs> <laughs> He's afraid no one will know him. And more afraid our clothes won't arrive. Well, don't you worry about that, Tag. Tomorrow's going to be a big day. And I'll be lucky if I remember my own name. I'll probably even spell it wrong in my newspaper. <laughs> Come on, let's go inside. It looks like the wedding's coming off, boys, just like we heard. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here in the sight of God and in the face of this company to join together this man and this woman in holy matrimony, which is an honorable estate and therefore not to be entered into unadvisedly or lightly, but reverently, discreetly, advisedly, soberly, and in the fear of God. Into this holy estate, these two persons present come now to be joined. If any man can show just cause why they may not lawfully be joined together, let him speak, or hereafter forever hold his peace. McAndrews, get some men. We'll form a posse. One of them it looks just like one of the horses. Sure does. I wonder why he's alone. I don't know, but he ain't gonna be for long. Easy, boy. You ain't hurt none too bad. Just a pool tendon. Don't touch it, mister. 
Right on buckle. You been trouble? That's right, mister, and you're right in the middle of it. It's been fired. Not too long ago. That's right. I fired a rattler back trail a few miles. Three times? Three times. You ever try shooting a rattler sitting atop a spooked horse? Looks a lot faster than he rides, don't he? He seems to. What's your name, mister? My name is Davis, Will Davis. What slowed you down? Your horse go lamb? And I stopped attending. <laughs> That's lucky for us, ain't it? Look, I got a right to know just what do you want. We want you, Davis, and your two pals. I told you I... Pals? That's right, now mount up. I've got a lame horse. Tell him the truth. The pull tendon. Well, that's too bad. You just have to walk back then. Now you can ride double with me. Get his horse. Wait a minute. You better state your reasons. Or you're going to have to drag me. Well, after what you did, that'd be a pleasure. Easy, Mac. You're under arrest, Davis. That reason enough? What's the charge? Armed robbery. Maybe murder. Murder? my custody. As long as he is, the law will prevail, not personal feelings. Oh, son, would you take care of my horse's leg like these rubbing? Sure. He sure doesn't look like a killer, does he, Andy? No, he doesn't, Ted, but neither did Billy the Kid. Lofty, from what you've told me, all the evidence is circumstantial. They can't try him without proof. Well, they can try him, Annie. They can't convict him. Well, we'll know about that soon enough. The judge just arrived. He's not due for another week. I know. John Robbins wired him, convinced him he ought to move up the date of the circuit court. John's in a big hurry, isn't he? Well, do you blame him? When does court convene? Tomorrow. That's what I came over to tell you. They're at the courthouse now selecting a jury. The judge wants to see you over there. Look after things here, will you? Sure. Say, ma'am, could I see you for a minute? You ever heard of a hard luck Joe? Yes. I'm one of them. You know, when things uh, go bad for a man, that one bad thing after another seems to follow him. For instance, take the time that I waited in line for four hours to try to get a job herding cattle for the government. And just as I got up to the table, you know what happened? No. The man said there's no more jobs. Then I was punching cattle for three months for a rancher. One day he rode out on the range and said, Davis, I've been foreclosed. I ain't got no money. But he said, I'll tell you about another job, a four-day ride away from here. So I got on my horse and I rode about two days. And my horse went lame. I got off the horse and started to take care of that leg. And before you knew it, I was right in jail here on a charge of murder. I began to think I was a Jonah. As a matter of fact, I believe it is. Things don't look none too good for me, do they? Is there anyone you'd like for me to notify about the trial? No, I, I ain't got no kinfolk. You must have some friends that would be able to help. Not, ma'am. An old saddle tramp like me don't make any friends. I'll tell you one thing, though. That horse of mine, if he could talk, he'd tell the people around Sand Creek here that we never been in this territory. You know, 
I believe that. You do? Then I want to swear to you, ma'am, that I never saw that Prentice gang before. But you know something? What? That jury ain't going to believe it. kindness and understanding towards his fellow townsmen will never be forgotten by his many friends. Dave's personal feelings never obstructed his sense of duty. We all know that he was not a man of hate or revenge. For this unwarranted killing, justice must be done. trial continues. Killer takes stand. It's not very objective reporting, is it? John is trying Will Davis in his newspaper. He's already pronounced sentence. Gosh, there must be something we can do. You're still convinced he's innocent, aren't you, Annie? Do you think he's guilty? I don't know, but guilty or innocent, I know what John is doing is wrong. Kathy, we can all understand how John feels, but Davis deserves a fair trial, and he's not getting it. Well, he, he's had every chance to defend himself. With what? All he's got is his word against John and the power of the press. Everybody in town's on John's side, including the jury. Well, I know John's wrong, but what can I do? Lofty and I have tried to talk some sense into him, but he just won't listen. Maybe you'd have better luck. Well, I'll try, but... But what? Well, he's changed. I can't explain it. He, he's just not himself. Look, I'm going to try to explain something to you two. And I say it, knowing that it's supposed to be hard for a woman to understand, but... Oh, friendship between men's a deep and curious bond. It, it's hard to explain, but it wins wars. It makes a man willing to die to keep a friend alive. Now, John just lost a friend. And he's fighting back at what he thinks killed him. Would you do what he's doing? I can't say, Annie. Maybe I would. Maybe I wouldn't, I don't know. All I can do is understand how John feels. Do you think it would do any good if I talked to him? It's worth a try. I'm sure I'm right. No. John, please try to be reasonable. Will Davis is guilty. Isn't that for the jury to decide? They will. Well, what are you writing now? Their decision? What is it you want me to do? Just be fair. Stop using your newspaper as a weapon. Give the man a chance. Like you gave Dave? At least Dave had a chance to fight back. Wait a minute. Look, Kathy. I am looking. And I don't like what I see. And I don't like what I'm going to say. Just a week ago, you were the kindest, most considerate man I've ever known. You were the man I was going to marry, remember? But you're not that man anymore. You're a total stranger. Kathy, Dave was murdered. If this man goes free, this town can become a haven for outlaws. Can't you understand? I'm sorry. I'm sorry for both of us. anybody can do in five days, unless he could conjure up a miracle. Anything new? No, uh, just some wanted posters and bulletins. Your horse, Mr. Davis, he's come along fine. His leg's almost well. Thanks, son. Why didn't I see you look after him? Hey, Annie. Yes? This bulletin, take a look. Hey, what is it, sis? 
Just maybe a miracle. Huh? It's from the Marshall and Rimrock. It says three men identified as the Prentice gang robbed the bank there two days ago. Gosh, I knew Will didn't do it. Oh, hold on, Tag. We'll need more than this. Gosh, doesn't that prove that Will wasn't one of them? I'm afraid not, Tag. To prove it, we gotta catch him. And this is the lead. Good. Tag, get the horse's saddle. Yes, ma'am. I'll be right back. I'm gonna go over and see John for a minute. I still don't see where this bulletin will change a thing. The Prentice gang could have gotten another man since then. Don't you see it leaves a reasonable doubt? Not in my mind, it doesn't. Davis is guilty. All we're asking for, John, is time. It may take longer than five days. Well, what can I do? The jury found him guilty. With a lot of help from your paper. With that same influence, you could ask for a postponement. I'm sorry, Annie. As far as I'm concerned, Davis is getting what he deserves. I wish you all the luck in finding the other men responsible. I'm sorry too, John. If an innocent man dies, it's not gonna be easy on your conscience. An innocent man has already died. Dave Carey. Outlaws. So do we. But in case we run out of time, you won't forget to do what I told you to do. No, ma'am. I'll do it. <laughs> Good luck. Any luck in Rimrock? Uh, nothing will do us much good, Annie. Everybody's pretty scared of Prentice and his boys. Even double the guards and all the stage runs. You don't think Prentice doesn't know that. Is there anything big going out today? Oh, there's a mine payroll going to Cedar City that's big. But like I said, it's under double guard. Yes, you did. All right, what's going on? I was just trying to put myself in Prentice's boots, thinking I'd like to get hold of that payroll money. And? And I just figured out where I'd try and catch the guards with surprise. Well, don't keep it a secret. Where? Cedar Canyon, by the old mine shack. The stage has to move real slowly through there. Annie, if I didn't know you better, I'd say you'd been out in the sun too long. But? But I know you better. Let's go. <laughs> uh, sure glad you're on the right side of the law, Annie. Well, when you're hunting, it helps to be able to think like whatever it is you're hunting. True enough. They'll spot us if we ride in on them from here. Yes, I know. I'll go around the ridge and cut off the other end of the canyon. You come up from behind. Be careful. We're being followed. Come on. Make a fight of it from here.
Nice work. I was getting worried. We're gonna have to ride fast to get to Sand Creek in time. We better drop these boys off at the marshal's office in Rimrock. All right, come on up. Mr. Davis. Mr. Davis. Yeah. Come here. What do you want? I blistered your horse, and I've been working him, too. He's in good shape. Thanks, son. You're about the best pal I got. Oh, uh, yeah, it's okay. I got your horse around back. Be careful and good luck. Davis slugged me and escaped. Your brother here gave him the key to his cell. They were gonna hang him, Annie. I did what you told me to. I had to. Well, you would have hanged an innocent man. This statement clears Will Davis of all the charges. Well, where'd you get that? From Prentice. He and his men are in jail at Rimrock. Oh, Annie. What's the matter? John's gone after them with a gun. Now, mister. You're coming back with me. I told you once before you was wrong about me. You're gonna have to kill me if you want to take me this time. That won't be hard. John! He's innocent. The Prentice gang are all behind bars, and we've got the proof right here. Annie, I... It's over, Will. I guess we can all be thankful we got back in time. And I can go right out of here clean? That's right. Davis, I don't know how to say this, but being sorry isn't much. Look, all I want to do is to get on my horse and ride. The farther I can get away from Sand Creek, the better I'll like it. Well, I'd like to do something. I'd like to give you something. They've given me everything I need. My freedom. Speaking of freedom, I guess you can go ahead and lose yours now, John. What do you mean? We came to Sand Creek for a wedding, remember? Yeah, that's right. Ring, please. By the authority vested in me, I now pronounce you man and wife. Am I ever glad this is over? You weren't nervous, were you, Tad? Gosh, no. But now I can get out of this darn old suit. <laughs> 